Hi engineers, today we're working with different types of air. We're going to talk about how we can get something lighter than air so it can float. We are going to talk about how we can use moving air to create a movement uh, of energy that we want to have. And we're going to start with that one first. This is called a wind bag. It contains about 44 liters or roughly 11 gallons. Now, if you want to have fun with your parents, ask them to inflate it. Now, I'll guarantee your parents will do this. And after half a dozen breaths, they're going to push it down and they're going to go. That's it. And that makes sense. A really, really, really in shape person can push about two liters of air with a breath, with one breath. And my head is a little bit dizzy trying that. Instead, we're going to use the other name of this bag. It's called the Bernoulli bag. No, Bernoulli wasn't some guy on a sitcom, you know. Bernoulli lived back in the early 1700s and he worked on Bernoulli's principle. And Bernoulli found out that when a fluid is in motion, it has a lower pressure than when that same fluid is not moving. So we're going to move a little bit of air through the bag and hopefully Bernoulli's principle will create a low pressure air that will suck the rest of the air in the bag. Now I'm going to try this. It doesn't always work first time. Don't hold your face near the, uh, on the bag. We hold it about six to 10 inches away. I can now tie that off. Now that air wasn't in my lungs. When I started blowing through, I gave it clearance so that as my breath went in, it creates a low pressure and it sucked the rest of the air in. That's why I was holding the mouth open like this to give the rest of the air a chance to flow in. And then I just watched and when it kind of floops, I know that that's the maximum of air that I'm gonna get in there. I would say I captured probably 10 gallons of air with that one breath. Half a gallon was mine, and the other nine and a half gallons were pulled in by Bernoulli's principle. It's a wonderful thing to check out. There is good stuff on Wikipedia. Normally I don't recommend Wikipedia, but in this case, Wikipedia has a really nice page on Bernoulli's principle. And for those who are in uh, Renaissance, I'm going to have wind bags available for you. I'm going to deliver them to uh, RSA. And then on the next uh, equipment pickup date, you can pick up your own Bernoulli bags or your wind bags and try to inflate this yourself. If you're careful, you can reuse this. I don't tie them particularly tightly. Other students did the other day and I spent half the time trying to untie their bags. But it's actually pretty stiff material, so if you don't have it really pushed tight, pull tight, you can push it through and get enough, uh, you see, to work it open. And of course, if you have a brother or sister you don't like, do the Bernoulli bag before you brush your teeth and then go up to them and blast them with like 10 gallons of your bad breath. So, wind bags, also known as Bernoulli bags, show Bernoulli's principle in action and uh, you all will be getting one of those. Now, what other ways can we use on Bernoulli's principle? Firefighters use the same principle, but instead of blowing into a bag, they have a fan that blows air into a burning building. What, that'll make the fire burn hotter. But when the, when the fan drives air in, it pulls more air in through the open door or window and that creates a safe, smoke-free space for the firefighters to work in. They're not surrounded by smoke. They have excellent visibility. They can communicate well with each other, okay?
So that is one use of Bernoulli's principle. We also use it on a fire hose, on a uh, regular garden hose. If you've ever had an attachment, when the water comes through, it's low pressure because it's moving and it sucks up the fertilizer or the spray foam to wash your house. That's Bernoulli's principle in action too, okay? Now I know this is gonna be a longer video than most that you've seen, but I'm trying to cram in two or three lessons here in one take and now we're going to try to do the solar bag. I'm going to try to use a little, little bit of Bernoulli to inflate the bag but this thing's huge and let me get it out of the car. solar bag is a lot thinner material than the Bernoulli. As you can see, it's wafer thin. You can see my hand through it. And the reason why is we're going to try to create lift just using the power of the sun. Now, I have already tied off this one end. And my assistant's going to put a foot on that. And I'm going to try to walk into the general direction of the wind with the other end. There it is. Going to do is have you grab hold of that and hold it tightly closed, and I will use a oops, and I will use a bunch of Bernoulli's principles to inflate it about 10 or 15 gallons at a time. That's a nice one. Okay, you can release, and I'll let that bubble down, and now you get that one. That's a good one. I know, you can release. <laughs> Maybe one more. Maybe one more. Give her credit, folks. She's trying to handle a part of the balloon and film. That's pretty cool. There we go. Might have to be the last bit. Okay, now I'll take that, okay, and what we'll do is, you may not be able to hear me, so you keep close to me and I will find the direction of the prevailing wind, and you get upwind of me, okay? Get upwind. That way we'll be shooting the other way. it's black and the idea is that the bag will absorb the solar energy and gradually heat up the inside you will also watch the currents of warm and cold air flow through it as it will snake up and down It's lifted 
feet above the ground, it's not lifting too high because the wind is actually acting like a coolant. Whenever the air gets hot, the wind blows by and it cools it right off and you'll see it go up and then it'll flop down and you'll see the bubbles of warm air flex toward the end, cool off and then come back. If we ever get some nice gentle breeze, it'll begin to lift up and you'll watch the thermals wave just like this now. You see how it's inflating at the other end? The air is expanding now because the bag is heating up under the sun. So the hot air is going here, the cold air comes here, that makes this end heavy and pulls it down. This is what happened to the Hindenburg. All the buoyancy was in the front with the, uh, heli with the hydrogen and the hydrogen in the back began to burn and that's why the Hindenburg pitches up. The solar bag pitches up because of the difference in cooling. nice gentle day you can just stand here for an hour and just watch it flex and go up and down heating and cooling itself see the thermal rippers ripples here's a hot spot and then that hot air goes forward and lifts that the cold air comes down but as long as we can keep good sun on it this thing will stay in the air even though it's just wind in my breath well, that's because you're full of hot air, Mr. Parks. Not really. This is the sun heating the wind that was inside, trapped inside. See, here's the hot air now constantly shifting. It's really fun to watch and it's really fun to control. Now that the wind is a little bit lighter, I'd love to have this thing fuller. You go almost straight up. Okay, now I'm going to deflate it, which means somebody's going to step on this again. And when I deflate it, I'm going to let you feel the warmth of the air inside, okay? I won't let you get burned. It is possible on a really good summer's day that the air is hot enough to burn you. But on a day like this, I just probably feel like a warm wind. We've also used this bag a little bit, and there could be micro holes in it. There, there is that possibility. like things living, isn't it? No, it's just really, it's just all the different pressures created by the different temperatures of air that are inside it. Okay, get your hand ready. Can you feel it? A little bit. Because it's snuck behind you. <laughs> How warm does that feel in there? It feels... Feels like a warm breath, yeah. doesn't it? Okay, you hold this end, and I'll squeeze it out from the other end. Of course, now we're mixing uh, regular air into it, and so it'll cool down. But can you feel it coming out? A little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. That's hot. Hot? It's, it's, it's just... Mm. It's not burning, though, right? No. Now, you can buy solar bags as part of a, an experiment kit. Uh, they're, of course, more expensive than the uh, Bernoulli bags, but still kind of fun to mess around with. Uh, we only have one of these, and like I say, we've used it about a half a dozen times now. It's still working pretty well. The main thing about the solar bag is you get to see thermal currents. When the air gets hot, 
it naturally expands hot air has more energy therefore it takes up more room than cold air of the same mass and when it expands it displaces the cooler air and it lifts and now we got a problem hot air here cold air here the cold air will sink and the airs will mix again and then they will reheat and you will get this kind of wave on a beautifully calm day sometimes it'll stand almost straight up and then it'll collapse right down reheat and you'll watch the hot air and the cold air mixing in these giant waves. It's very relaxing. All right? So with the solar bag, we've created a hot air balloon. We allow the energy from the sun to ex excuse me, expand the air inside so that it takes up more volume than the air outside, and that creates lift. Now imagine this on a grand scale. We could have balloons a hundreds, a hundreds of meters long, and they would be able to lift things up. And they do this in the logging areas of the Western United States. They use balloons to lift logs out of rugged terrain to where they can get to the trucks to be carried out. Yeah, they're a lot bigger than this though. Lots of times they will use helium, but lots of times they'll just use hot air and they will paint them black to help them expand even farther, okay? So we've got Bernoulli's principle. We've got lighter than aircraft. The added energy to air expands it, so it takes up more volume per unit of mass than the colder air, and that creates a lighter than air balloon. That's what the Montgolfier brothers did in the 1780s. Then we had the wind bag, which showed Bernoulli's principle in action. Air in motion has a lower pressure than air that isn't moving. And that pulled gallons of air behind my one breath so I could inflate an 11 gallon ba bag with one breath. You now know the secret, but you don't have to tell mom and dad. When you get the bags, everything will be all right, okay? Thank you very much for your time. Look up Bernoulli's principle, look up lighter than air, buoyancy, and there's that great video of the Hindenburg when even though it's using hydrogen, once the hydrogen begins to burn, it loses buoyancy in the back part of the ship and it just kicks like our, our solar bag did. All right? Thanks, everybody. Bye.